If you think of Louisiana cooking, what do you think of? Gumbo, there's jambalaya, etouffee, sauce piquant perhaps? Well, it's a lesser known dish, it's a braise, and they cook all sorts of things in it down there in Louisiana, everything from alligator to today's chicken. And Ashley's here, she's gonna tell us more about this dish. I sure am, yeah. If you didn't grow up in Louisiana, the chances are you probably haven't heard of chicken sauce piquant. I had never heard of it till before we tried it here in the test kitchen. Yeah, and I am so excited to share it with everybody today because it is a really, really good dish. Great. And easy to do. So no squirrel, no alligator. We're going to be using chicken. Here we have two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. And I just wanna show you how we got this to look like that. And I'm gonna start just by trimming the fat off and then I'm going to quarter it. So I'm just gonna run my knife really lightly along the top and then I'll run my knife just along the outer edge there. Cleaning it up. Cleaning it off, that's exactly right. So now I'm gonna run my knife just right down the center to quarter it. Turn that to the side and run that just along the center just like so. And this really is just going to make life a little bit easier when we are ready to eat. Great. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. All right, so here we have what's called Louisiana seasoning. This is one tablespoon. I'm just gonna sprinkle that over the chicken and then I'm gonna toss just to make sure it's all nicely coated. Great, and you can buy Louisiana seasoning at your supermarket. Sometimes it's called Creole or Cajun seasoning. I'm not gonna get into that argument. <laughs> or you can make your own. We've got a great recipe on our website, cookscountry.com. And here I have one half cup of all-purpose flour. I'm gonna toss in here as well. So I have some oil that's been heating. This is a quarter cup of vegetable oil that's been preheating in this Dutch oven. It's been set over medium high heat and as you can see, it's shimmering nicely. So I'm gonna add in two batches the chicken to the pot. And an important note, don't get rid of the extra flour in the bowl. We're gonna use it a little bit later on in the recipe. Great. Three to five minutes per side and then we're gonna transfer the chicken once it's nice and golden brown to a plate. Great. As you can see, the second batch is nice and golden brown. So let's take it out. Now I just wanna bring attention to these beautiful brown bits that are forming on the bottom of the pan. As you know, that is called fond, mm -hmm. and that is flavor. Flavor. All right, so I am gonna set that aside for now. I'm gonna just turn that off for just one okay. second because I have a few things to focus on over here. Now this is gonna be the foundation of our sauce piquant. So here I have one green bell pepper and I want to chop it. So I'm gonna start by trimming off the top and then trimming off the bottom. Set that aside because I will be using that. Now just cut a slit down the side mm -hmm. there. And then you're gonna open it up and then run your knife just along the outer interior of the pepper. And then you have a flat pepper to chop from. About half inch pieces is perfect. So you notice I don't have any carrots on the counter. It's not a traditional French mirepoix. And the French use carrot, celery, and onion. But it's Louisiana. That's right. So we are gonna be using celery, onion, and green bell pepper. That's the trinity. All right, perfect. So I'm gonna turn my pot back on. Now we have it back on medium high heat. And now let's add the rest of our ingredients. Okay. So one onion that is chopped. Good sizzle sound there. And our chopped green bell pepper. Starting to smell good. One rib of celery that was chopped as well. This is two cloves of minced garlic. And one tablespoon more of vegetable oil. And then one more half teaspoon of that Louisiana seasoning. And it's missing our last ingredient, and that's the remaining bit of flour that we oh, yeah. set aside earlier. Again, we're not using a roux, so we're gonna be pouring this remaining flour on top of the vegetables, and it's going to just help to slightly thicken our sauce piquant. Great idea. You can really smell the spices as soon as they hit that hot oil. They have a lot of oil-soluble compounds in them for flavor, but also the heat is just really activating it. Yeah. And you can see I'm already getting some of that fond up. All right, it's been five minutes, and as you can see, our vegetables are nice and just softened. Just softened. So now let's make the sauce. Okay. We have one 28-ounce can of crushed tomatoes. And we're going with crushed instead of diced because we wanted it to fall apart. Yes. Okay. We love the texture of that, as opposed to the diced tomatoes, which held on to their texture okay. a little bit too much. Here I have three cups of chicken broth. 
And as if things couldn't get any better than they already are, we're gonna add a little bit of bacon. Mm -hmm. Two slices of bacon, no need to render it or pre-cook it ahead of time. It's merely in there just for flavor and to add a little bit of smokiness to the background. Mm. Two tablespoons of Worcestershire, or some umami and depth of flavor. Serious savory flavor mm -hmm. going in there. One bay leaf. Now, stir up any brown bits that formed on the bottom of the pan, that fond I was talking about earlier. Yes. I'm gonna return the chicken to the pot. I'm gonna nestle it right on in there. And sometimes some juices have accumulated at this step, so if so, I'm just gonna pour those right back into the pot, because that is some good flavor right there. Sure is. All right, Bridget, as you can see, the sauce is up to a simmer, so I'm gonna put the lid on the pot and transfer this Dutch oven to an oven that's preheated to 350 degrees, and I'm gonna cook it until the chicken is tender, which should take about 45 minutes. All right, the time has come. Oh, yes. Beautiful. I do wanna discard the bacon and the bay leaf. It's sacrificed its flavor for the betterment of the sauce. A little bit of seasoning, one teaspoon of Tabasco sauce. Tabasco has that very distinct vinegary flavor. So I'm just gonna mix that in here, just taste for some seasoning real quick. And the great thing about braising, especially small pieces of chicken like that, you don't have to worry about taking the temp. You know after 40 some minutes, it's going to be done. Mm -hmm. And nice and tender. Yes. Great. Okay, so as you can see, we have some white rice. I'm just gonna add few spoonfuls of this gorgeous sauce mm -hmm. with a few pieces of that chicken. Mm. Okay. Gorgeous. Almost done. Some scallions. Oh man. <sighs> Tuck into that chicken first. Don't even need a knife. Nope. That's because we quartered it. And the sauce isn't too thick mm. without being cooked with that roux. The tomatoes add a really nice acidic component to it, but what I like is that it's not too stodgy. Yes. That meat is fall apart yeah. tender. It's gorgeous. Mm. So uncomplicated mm -hmm. and so complex with flavor. One pot. One pot? Yeah. Ashley, thank you so much for bringing this fabulous dish to our attention. You're welcome. Yeah, gonna make it all the time, and you are too. Chicken sauce pecan, well, it starts with chicken thighs. Fry the chicken in two batches, then cook onion, bell pepper, and celery. Add tomatoes, bacon, and Worcestershire. Simmer the chicken in the sauce, season with Tabasco, and serve with rice and scallions. So from Cook's Country, an amazing Louisiana chicken sauce pecan. I'm starting to feel that Tabasco a little bit. Creeping up on you, huh? Right here. <laughs> Thanks for watching Cook's Country from America's Test Kitchen. So what'd you think? Leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or just say hi. Now you can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. Alligator. <laughs>